Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Still Saved Show, where we break down the breakthrough with some of the world's most influential and some of the coolest people in my mind um, that God has done some remarkable things through. And boy, do I have a story for you today, <laughs> a story that needs to be told. I'm sure you told it a time and time again, um, but it, it's my honor to be able to capture it and share it um this way man yeah, so yeah. pastor gentry johnny yeah. gentry the man the legend the goat jg jg yeah. in the building man thank you so much for hanging yeah. out with me man and welcoming me and inviting me into your office yeah 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 <laughs> that i'm that i'm never at <laughs> yeah, right. we were searching around the church we were trying to find a spot to do this and we were just like yo like why not why not here right, right. um so i'm always looking for the best place to to tell the story. Yeah, well, I'm honored that you would have mm -hmm. me, and uh, just amazing catching up with you, man. And looking at all the amazing things you've accomplished, oh, just getting man. caught up over the years, bro. And I'm just glad that you held up the bloodstained banner, man. Because you you could have quit, but you just kept kept pressing and, and, and look at what God is doing through you. Look, man. Truth be told, I think I did quit a yeah. time or two. Uh, hey. <laughs> I'm just we being are, real. Yeah, like, yeah. I think there were a couple moments where I, I did throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. um, now I did go run back and grab it. But God. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, but God. <laughs> but I'm not even going to sit here and try to lie to folks and act like uh, I was just super resilient. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that there was a smidget of resiliency, a flicker of light, of hope that mm -hmm. I held on to. Mm -hmm. But, man, I quit several times. Oh, yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? For sure. Um, but like you said, man, had it not been for God... Uh, we probably wouldn't be here right yes, now. Yes, sir. We probably yes, wouldn't be here right now. Yes, but man, I've always looked up to you. Um, no lie. You've uh, I met you through my father-in-law. Um, you know, you've been serving in the prison, serving in the community, in the streets, um, pastoring for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the 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 credentials, I, we can go on and on and on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I just wanted to publicly say, man, I've always looked up to you and admired your commitment to the cause of Christ um, but, man, for those folks out there who may not know who you are, mm -hmm. do me a favor, man, yeah. and, and, and enlighten us a little bit, man. Well, I'm just nobody <laughs> trying to tell everybody <laughs> about somebody. Yeah. Uh, man, Johnny Gentry, uh, born in Houston, Texas. H-Town, baby. Grew up in Cali on the West Coast. Um, six weeks old. Mama left my daddy, moved to Cali. Got caught up in gang culture early on. Want to be gangbanger. Grape Street Crips moved to Seaside, California, put Cripping and Crack in our neighborhood. Mm. So that's what we looked up to. <clears throat> um, man, See, just, I didn't even know all that. I didn't know yeah, that part. You yeah, know? yeah. So he so, was real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, we emulated what we saw yeah. in, in California, West Coast culture in the 80s and 90s. Just devastated our neighborhoods, our communities, and our families. <clears throat> I'm from the era where one out of five black men would die at the hand of another black man. Mm. Mm -hmm. from that 80s and 90s, that black-on-black -black crime era that really yep. just took off. By God's grace, man, got to go play some college football. Um, Where'd you play? Santa Clara University. Played running back, Santa Clara University. Went to prison my senior year in college. Man. Behind some dumb stuff. Yeah. Um, what kind, hold on. See, we can't just... You know, we we go in there right now. Like, I, we are are we there? Are we there yeah, yet? Yeah, um, we, we, what yeah, what kind in. of dumb stuff, man? Man, it was a you know Bill Bill uh, Bill Clinton did that three strikes you're out yeah. in the early '90s, I, yeah. and so yeah. I did a crime that was classified as a violent crime. Mm -hmm. So they gave me a mandatory ten years, mm. and I got I had you know by God's grace I had amazing lawyers. I had a praying Baptist praying mama. Look. Who paid the lawyer? That's right. <laughs> she paid and prayed. Yeah, and I, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so that ten year sentence was suspended to a one year California state jail. Wow. But still, um, man, that's your senior year in college, senior in college, right? I had two classes left to finish my degree. Come on, man. Yeah. Like the potential was yours. You playing football? What were you studying? Just Communications. Curious. Okay. Yeah. Now it makes sense now. Yeah. Like, it's all starting to make sense. Yeah, I'm coming full <laughs> circle with it. Like, God, uh, yeah, am I ever gonna use my degree? No, you yeah. use. You have. Yeah. Like, truth be told, you've been using it. Yeah. You know, you've been a, a phenomenal communicator. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, whether yeah. it's behind the pulpit in the prisons or just one on one, I've seen you in action, man. Even when you're not behind the pulpit, mm -hmm. you know, um, leading meetings. Right, negotiating deals, mm -hmm. like that's mm -hmm. all communication. Yes, yes, so, it is. Anyway, yeah. my bad, man. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, you're good. So my emphasis was television production. I wanted to write and produce for television. Mm 
Uh, I wanted to go to law school and and do entertainment law. <clears throat> Brother went to prison. <laughs> but <sighs> but God, uh, man, just you know that kind of began a a real tumultuous time in my life. Um, had an ankle monitor on when I got out. Mm. Got in trouble some more. Cut the ankle monitor off. Came to Houston, Texas, mm. like 1995. Yeah, my daddy was here. My sister was here, and I got into it with some Crips from Oakland, and it was a hit out on me. Yeah. Mom was like, when they come to kill you, they're going to kill all of us. So you got you to gotta get out of my house. Why don't you go to Houston and let things die down? I was like, nah, Mom, I don't want, I don't want to turn down. You know what I'm saying? I want to turn up. Yeah. I want to yeah. prove I earned my stripes back. You know, I've been gone to college for four years. Uh-huh. I want to show the homies that I'm still, a, I'm, still, I'm still a soldier, young and dumb, mm-hmm. stupid. And um, came to Houston. My plan was I'm going to stay here for about a week, let things die down, go back to Cali. Man, I got saved. The first day I got off the airplane, had an encounter with Jesus when I hit Houston, Texas. Man. Got saved, met my wife, started a family, that's, never looked back. That's what, so, but talk to me about that encounter though, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, coming off the airplane, <clears throat> what, what was it? Like, was it, you know, supernatural encounter? Was it yeah. somebody shared something with you and the aha moment hit? Like, talk to me about, had you yeah. all, had you been familiar with Jesus prior to the encounter? Yeah. Like, yeah. what was that like? So, you know, grew up in a Baptist church. Yep. Mm-hmm. Did the little speeches with the little suits and the Easter suits and all of that. <laughs> I didn't know Jesus, man. <laughs> I got baptized at 12. Yeah. I didn't know Jesus. At 13, mm-hmm. I started gangbanging. Yeah. You know, I got jumped in the crib gang at 13 years old. So, I, so the year after I got baptized. So um, It was like, you got you got jumped into one gang and then got, got jumped, jumped into an entirely right, different... <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, Satan attacks things in the fetal stages. He mm-hmm. don't wait. He, he attacks it in the womb. He not gonna wait until that thing is cock diesel enough to really swing. Yeah, yeah. He, and so that's what he did. You know, that's his method. He, he put attacks it, he, you when you're most vulnerable. He put a hit out on all the baby Jew boys. He tried to get Jesus before Jesus could even. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He put a hit out on all the baby Jew boys. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you when you are defenseless. Yeah, that's what he do. Um, but uh, sister picked me up from the airport, mm-hmm. March eighth, nineteen ninety five, my birthday. I was twenty four years old, <clears throat> and I was like, "Where are we going?" She's like, "We're going to Bible study." She's like, what? She's like, yeah, I got to sing tonight. I was like, nah, just drop me off at the crib. She's like, nah, I can't. We're going to be late. So we're going to Bible. I was like, yeah, I didn't come here to go to Bible study. Took me to her church. Dr. Michael P. Williams, Joy Tabernacle, he started teaching the Bible study. Mm-hmm. I never heard anybody teach the word like that before. This man, Dr. Michael P. Williams, my spiritual father, um, may his soul rest in peace, was kind of a Christian Farrakhan type. He was a black liberation theologist. And I'd never heard the word broke down like that. Got saved that night. <clears throat> um, two men came with me after church. Big cock diesel bros. I'd never seen real men yeah, who yeah. were like kingdom men. They laid hands on They was like, you mind if we pray for you? Bro, I passed out. I had an out of body experience. I'm looking at myself laying on the ground and I saw two dark figures leave that I now know were probably demons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that they like literally left. I'm looking at my body on the ground in the foyer of this church and I saw these two dark silhouettes leave my body as they prayed for me. Mm. Bro got real saved that night. I got Bible saved that night. Man, 24. 24 years old. So what happened next? Because I mean, you know, you still got the hit out on you. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Cali, it's like, all right, we put Cali in the wind. Mm -hmm. You know, I know tons of people, even myself, who have Kind of not, not want to say ran from some stuff, but mm-hmm. but went to go get away from some mm-hmm. stuff to let some stuff die down. That's mm-hmm. actually kind of how I got saved. Yeah, it was some stuff going down here in Houston. I decided to stop selling drugs. Mm-hmm. Had a friend invite me to a church camp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, man, I got to get out the city. You know, right. let me go. You right. know, um, so I, I get it. But yeah. but what yeah. happened next? Because a lot of times we think you know we get saved and all our problems just go away. Yeah. You know, yeah. was it like that? Or? I sold out. I became a disciple. Yeah. Just like when I got jumped to the Crips, whatever they said, do, I did. They said, hey, see that fool right there? You know, I was like, which one? I turned my hat around. Who, 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 who him right here? You got to knock that fool out. So uh-huh. whatever they said, do, that's what I did. So when I got saved, I did the same thing. Wow. I joined this church and they was like, yeah, come to Bible study. I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, come, come, come out for the, uh, you know, the, we heard you can sing. You know, come out for the praise team. So here I am, bruh. One foot in the streets and one foot on the praise team. Yeah, yeah. Um, so met my then girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Started, to, you know, she got pregnant. Bro, bro, my, bro, better get married. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. do the right thing, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Um, but the same week I found out she was pregnant, I got indicted on a aggravated robbery, aggravated assault case. Yeah, yeah. 
So I was running with some black gangster disciples on the southwest side. Mm-hmm. One foot in church, one foot in the streets. Right, right. I was staying off of Bissonette, oh, Forum man. Park. 19- Welcome to A-Leaf. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, that, that's my, my home. <laughs> yeah. So I got indicted the same week I found out that, that she was pregnant with my first child. So um, now, hold up. Was this a new charge? Yes. Or was this something that followed you from Cali? This, so, this was straight so, up Texas. All right. You left Cali, came to H Town. Yeah. And I, I started you. hitting licks with some mm-hmm. cats. You know, it's, no- e- it's easy, right? Like when you've done it for so long, like let's just be real. Like yeah. it is very easy to, you know, keep a foot in that door. It is. I don't care what, what city you go to. Yeah. You know? And nobody told me don't mess with Texas. Mm-mm. Listen. Cause you come out here and you see them signs say don't mess with Texas and you get that indictment paper and say the state of Texas versus Johnny Gentry, bro. That puts some act right in my life. Bro, everything's big in <laughs> Texas. Everything. Everything. <laughs> including the, the state penitentiaries. Right. Right. Um, right. Which you know all too well, not because of your time that you spent. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you've been um fortunate enough to go back. We'll talk about that in a second, man. Yeah, keep going, yeah, man. Yeah. Keep going. I'm curious. So, so I started making God promises. I was locked up. They offered me 50 years. Mm. It was an aggravated robbery, aggravated assault. So it's 25 years per count. So they stacked it. Mm. DA stacked it and said, yeah, you're a gangbanger from California. They went, they ra- raided my apartment. They had pictures of me with, you know, throwing up stuff. And, you know, he's, so they, they tried to make it seem like I was some just notorious criminal, bro, and was like, they offered me 50 years. Like so, they were doing you a favor. Right, mm-hmm. right. So, um, man, I started praying. And I was like, God, if you get me out of this, I'll be a daddy. Yeah. I'll be a husband. I'll serve you. Man, I'm about to get emotional, bro. Ah! Um, six years later, case was dismissed. Mm. Like dismissed, dismissed. Yes, yeah, dismissed. Like not come out on papers, no ankle monitor, right. no, you know, supervision. Right. I fought the case for six years. Yeah. And it was dismissed. They didn't have enough evidence. Man. Dismissed it. But that was this, that six year period was a was a testing period to see if JG is gonna do right. Yeah. Are you going to keep your word? So, man, I was in that five-year period, that first five, I missed church like twice. I was mm. in church, um, got married, <clears throat> um, started a family, and was just trying to do everything right. Yeah. Really, I'm talking about a real, for me, I was really trying to do a real 180. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, got a license to preach Yeah. in 98. I was 27. I felt like I had a calling. Didn't mm-hmm. know what that looked like. Never wanted to be a preacher. Just wanted to be obedient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know um, that feeling, man, yeah. where it's like, I don't necessarily know exactly what I want to do, but mm-hmm. I do know that that I want to do the right thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's like, all right, God, whatever you want to do, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. And, right. and, and like you said, it, it, it comes from that, that, that gang lifestyle, yeah. too. It's yeah. like once you get in and you're indoctrinated into that and you're, you're in, the, in the game, it's like, hey, man, you're going to do whatever we tell you to do. Mm-hmm. So you took that same mindset, yep. that same grit, that same commitment, that yep. same loyalty, that same yep. faithfulness. And applied. I think I've, I don't know if I've shared this on this platform before, but I know after I got saved and I stopped selling drugs, mm-hmm. I would take the same strategies I used um, in in you know in, in selling stuff on this same corner, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, I would never go home until I I gave myself a quota. You yeah. know, whether it was two thousand, three thousand, five thousand. I'm like, I'm not going home until I do this, right? Yeah. I got saved, mm-hmm. and I would flip the script, and I say, "Hey, I'm not going home until I, I, I at least share Jesus with at least wow. five people, three people. Wow. Same block. Wow. Same block. Wow. I took the same level of commitment. Was that in H Town? Oh yeah. What hood? Cook Road. Cook- yeah. oh. In between Beach Nut. Say less. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You already know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Not too wild, far. Wild you know. West. Yeah, man. Wow, wow, know, west. Right down the street from White Cap True Lawn. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I even had pastors and mentors tell me I was crazy. They were like, "It's dangerous." Mm-hmm. I was like, "It was dangerous when I was out there selling drugs too." Yeah. You yeah. know, the, the, the I, I put myself in harm's way for something you know that that couldn't save me. Right. You know right. why couldn't I do it for somebody who that was can't. actually, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Ooh. I get it, man. Yeah, yeah, I get and it. And I think the desperation mm. also when you've been broken and when everything that you've tried failed. Yeah. And all of my own intellect, street smarts, um, whatever, swag, all, none of that worked. Mm-hmm. And then you like, here's something new, an opportunity for change. And it's and I'm feeling it, and I can see light into the tunnel. It, yeah. just, it just makes sense to go all in. And I was yeah. desperate for life, desperate for, desperate to change. And so maybe there's a listener who's desperate for like just change, like whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. So just hold on to God for dear life. Yeah. Just yeah. radical obedience, I call it. 
man, <clears throat> it's like uh, Blind Bartimaeus, mm -hmm. you know, when mm -hmm. he was begging on the side of the the, the road and, um, yeah. you know, Jesus came to town and he just started screaming. Yeah. Right? Everybody like, chill out with all that, man. Yeah. And he's like, man, no, nah, man. He got louder. He yeah. got louder. He got louder. The That's desperation cool. in that, man. Um, it's like when the world tells you to be quiet or when they tell you what you're doing may not fit culture or mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. but it's like hey are, are you gonna continue to, right. to chase and chase after him desperate desperate times call for desperate measures man right. right and I know for me sounds like for yourself it was like I, I was willing to do anything yeah to get closer yeah yeah uh -huh. yeah and I thank God I th I'll never forget that place I think that's the place that was my foundation for being a transformative person yeah which is you know to to first be transformed mm -hmm. and um, fast forward. Yep, yep, um, yep. Got saved, got licensed to preach in 1998. I was 27 years old, um, doing the doing the daddy husband church thing. Um, I helped a friend start a church. Um, we were at a mega church in Houston. I was the men's ministry pastor for two years, um, and then the assistant pastor there started a church. We started a church in my living room. Had no idea what we was doing, bro. We was just out here freestyling. <laughs> yeah, you know, we didn't know how to start no church, man. But we did it, and that church grew, moved to the west side. And I was like, I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like something I'm supposed to do. I don't know what it is. So mm -hmm. I told my pastor at the time. I was like, he was like, man, you pregnant, bro? You gonna have to give birth. So I started a free indeed church in mm -hmm. 2003. Mm -hmm. And the same year we started the church. It was called Free Indeed Church. We started a, a transitional home for men coming out of prison. It was yeah. a 12 bed halfway house on the corner of Tidwell and North Wayside. Okay, okay. Uh, we rented a six bedroom house and Jesus and a job, bro. So we had a contract with, we, yeah, we had a contract with TDCJ. So if you come out of prison, come to our place, you stay there for 90 days. We did life skills, job readiness training, job placement, job coaching, um, and Bible studies. Um, 12 step support groups. Yep, yep. So we just offered that right there, and then it grew to a 50 bed program. So a lot of the guys that were um, coming through our program needed a pastor. Yeah. So the church was a great vehicle, kind of a, a partner along with the transitional home, because we were discipling men who were coming out of prison, yeah. just raising those guys up, loving on them, pouring on them. Some of, those, some of those guys were getting married, getting great jobs, they were really transforming their lives. Um, the church began to grow. Um, we started a nonprofit. That same year, 2004, we started you know, a nonprofit called Community Works, C yep. CDC, and you know, youth development, workforce development, economic redevelopment. And so that's what we've been on, man. We've been on the same thing ever since. So it's grown in a lot of ways. Um, <clears throat> now, yeah. It's <clears throat> crazy how, you know, it, it, the story could have went a number of different ways. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And But to see you taking such what many would consider such a very dark period, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a lost cause. Yeah. But taking it and flipping it. Yeah. And 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 you didn't flip it and just and run with it, but you went back. Yeah. You went back. Why did you feel that need or that call to to go back? Yeah. Right? Like yeah. who wants to go back to jail though? Right, <laughs> you know right, right, right. And I see you there like almost every other weekend. <laughs> right. I'm gonna I'm I'm a, I'm I'm gonna tell you what it was. Yeah. Your father in law. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds uh, about right. Yeah, yeah. Because well, it, it, but but here's the bottom line. The answer to your question is he who has been forgiven much mm. loves much. Yeah. And so I, I've always known, man, I'm supposed to be, you know, that if I'd have got that 50, I would I would have only been eligible for parole like three years ago. And it's yeah. 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 Cause in Texas you gotta do 80% of your time on, on an aggravated case. Ooh. So I would have only been eligible for parole like three, four years ago Damn. before I could even come up for parole had, yeah. I, had I got that 50. So the fact that he's allowed me to be free and have a semblance of freedom in him, I'm just like, I, I, I'm bought, bro. I, I'm mm. bought with a price. I don't belong to me. Mm. So therefore, whatever he wants me to do in whatever season, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Have I been perfect and, you know, and just always on, on my A game? No. Yeah. But I've always had a heart of, okay, God, whatever you want me to do. So your father-in-law. You know, yeah, man. called me and was like, JG. <laughs> we all have gotten that call. Yeah. I need you to go into the prison, man. God has need of you. I was like, nah, Ricky, I ain't going back to jail. <laughs> I ain't going back to jail, bro. I'm triggered. Like, I don't Right. <laughs> and then what's was funny is that I had, we were, I was ministering up in Dival, Texas, man, at this, at this little small little church, man. That's why you should never um, despise small beginnings. Oh, straight up. So I was ministering to this little church, man, and this little lady came up to me afterwards like, Pastor Gentry, yada, yada, can I pray for y'all? I was like, mm, I don't know if I want you to pray for me. That's what I was thinking in my yeah. head. And she had this, uh, she was like, 
your real ministry is prison ministry. I was like, yeah, I think to myself, yeah, I don't receive that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, nah. I didn't receive it you, when you, the judge tried to give it to me. Right. I'm not trying to receive yeah, it. Yeah, uh, you, you all, you missed it. <laughs> man, about a year later, Ricky, Ricky Bradshaw called me. Pastor Ricky Bradshaw called me. He was like, man, God has need of you. And man, we tore the prisons up. Man. Tearing the prisons of yeah. like, like transformation throughout regions of the prison. You know the work that was happening, mm -hmm. man, that we mm -hmm. all were locked arms doing together. So that's probably been some of the most rewarding work that I've done as a prison work. Yeah, tell me yeah. a little bit about that. Like, how, how has it been rewarding for you, you know, as you go in there and you see God work, you see God move, you you hear the stories, the testimonies, mm -hmm. um, you know, elaborate a little bit more about how rewarding that's been. Oh, man. It's almost like a third world country. Yeah. Prison, mm -hmm. Texas prisons are almost like a third world country. Um, people forget about the inmates, bro. Oh, for sure. And that's I think that's why Jesus said, when you've done it unto the least of them, you've done it unto me. When I was in prison, you know, you visited me not. Mm. Uh, when were you in prison? I didn't visit you. He said, you've done it to the least of them. So I get emotional over stuff like that. So I got something in my eye right now. Yeah. <laughs> Look, but, yeah. <laughs> I got a couple of friends I need to like write a letter to. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. But it's easy to forget about the inmates. Uh. And then when you get in there and you see how hungry yeah. they are, when I say hungry, these guys in prison, they're fasting. Yeah. They're in these 12-week Bible study courses. Mm -hmm. They're praying together. Um, they're just, they, they have a whole microcosm of kingdom inside of these prisons. Yeah. And yeah. when we go, all we're doing is activating yeah. or, you know, you know, kind of reinvigorating what they already have fostered. So these guys are on their face. Ministers are going in, and they have a, a very nice prison kingdom culture in Texas prisons. I can't speak for Cali. I speak for, you know, I've been in Texas prisons. So it's just been rewarding, man. We're going in, we're doing these freedom weekends. We stay overnight. We come in on a Friday. Um, we're hitting them with sexual purity. We're hitting them with prodigal. We just hitting them all these life change, experiential learning stuff. These guys are on their face repenting. They're going back and thinking about when they were molested as little boys. They're going back and dealing with issues of abuse and they were beat up by their stepfathers. They're going back and dealing with forgiveness. They're dealing with inner healing. Uh, all the stuff, all the tats that they got and stuff that they did to try to cover up their insecurities. They were, you know, so we walked them through all of that, man. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it's uh, like we ain't just coming in here reading a few scriptures. Nah, and having the Bible we ain't playing no banjo and singing bluegrass and yeah, seeing a couple yeah, songs. Yeah. No, we coming in, we going deep. Mm -hmm. We calling cats, we calling cats out, we calling cats out the gang. Mm. Like we call, hey, you right there, you ain't gang banging no more, homie. You're a leader, bro. You, 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 finna, you finna lead this small group. And, he's, and we come back six months later, and these guys are on fire for God. Ex Norte Anos, uh, MS 13s, Tongo Blast, Crips, Bloods, and they're in there. Together. Yeah. And there is a, and your, your father in law has an amazing testimony about a guy who was a Satanist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He I led the Satanist church mm. in the prison, got converted. So that's why it's been so rewarding. That's that's crazy, man. I, I know how how devastating it can be, how serious it is in these mm -hmm. Texas jails. Like I said, I'm a I'm a product of it, not myself personally, but my dad was in and out of jail wow. numerous times. Nine felonies. Wow. Uh, the last uh, you know sentence was my entire high school career, mm -hmm. from the time I was a freshman all the mm -hmm. way till my freshman year in college. So you did the time with him. Oh, for sure. You done for Texas. Sure. I did the anger. Yeah. I did the resentment. I did the throwing away of my basketball career, which I never blamed him for, by the way. Mm -hmm, Let me just, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that was my decision. Okay. Throwing away my, my hoop dreams to go sell drugs, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I could easily have been bitter and blamed it on him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but my dad was a good dude, man. Okay. He just had an alcohol problem. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, when he wasn't, he was, he was phenomenal. Awesome. But I, I was there. I would visit. I would go to the... Uh, they used to have, I think it was IFI, I think. Okay. And they would have these gatherings for family days, family days yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and even as a young kid, bro, I remember going to like the the county. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't remember what it was. I think my parents lied to me at the time and said he was going to work. <laughs> right. Oh, but I he's just working. remember I just remember crying <laughs> uh -huh. as I'm leaving, like, why he can't come home with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, so man. I've never been in jail <clears throat> longer mm -hmm. than a day. Um, you know, parking tickets. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, but um, for nothing serious. Right. But I'm familiar with the system okay. as a child, yeah. and the the turmoil and the trauma that it can cause for an entire family, oh, man. man. Yeah. So when I hear people like yourself who go back, um, it's just 
it's empowering, it's inspiring. Mm-hmm. But but like, what do you say? Like yeah. when you go back, yeah. like what do you br- what are you bringing? What are you? How are you encouraging and inspiring and motivating? You know, as a speaker, man, I'm always yeah. thinking like, okay, do I interject? <laughs> right. The technical part. Right. Joke story. Right. <laughs> no, you're thinking. Of, yo, you you're thinking along the right lines. Yeah. Right. But I know yeah. in these types of moments, man, it's more than that. Yeah. It's more than that. Yeah. No, but it, it's both and. Yeah. Um, you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Mm. When you go into the prison, bro, just tell your story. Just say, hey, I didn't do this, but I did do that. I should have, but God. And somebody's going to relate to you because there's somebody in there who's like, they're looking at you, they're like, man, that's me. Like, yeah. he's a good dude. I'm a good dude. He didn't get caught. I did get caught. Yeah. And then here's what God has done for him. And because God did this for Dave, he can do the same thing for me. Simple, just t- just tell your story. Man, no, I, I, you're right. You're mm-hmm. right. Sometimes we overcomplicate things, mm-hmm. you know, trying to make it more powerful. It's like God got it. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is tell the story. But the jokes is going to come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do, you know, because you, and you got to read the room. Yeah, because yeah. in situations like that, man, they want to laugh, they yeah. want to cry, they want to shout, uh-huh. they want to, they want, they want that heart string. Just like you know, when a preacher gets up and does all, he takes takes you through all those series of emotions. <laughs> yeah, it'll come natural. Yeah, it'll yeah. come natural. All right, so if they want a joke, give me. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Like I, <laughs> no, I ain't gonna go there. I ain't gonna go there. But oh uh, man, pl- just playing devil devil's ad- advocate briefly. Because I know how it is, man. People oftentimes, like, raise their noses at folks who get saved in jail. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They can jailhouse religion. Right. And we know that there are some folks who kind of play the system mm-hmm. and and have ulterior motives, man. But but God is real. Mm-hmm. And God is doing a real work in the prisons. What do you have to say about some folks who might be skeptical? Yeah. And it's understandably so. Because mm-hmm. that comes from the uncle who came home from prison, had his Bible. The whole time he was in jail, he was writing letters about how good God is. Mm-hmm. Every other every other sentence was God. And when he came home, Unc threw the Bible in the trash, and Unc went back to the block. Unc went back to pimping. Unc went back to smoking crack. Unc went back to robbing. Unc went back, you know what I'm saying? And so they're like, man, it was jailhouse religion. However, I will say that there is a remnant mm. in Texas prisons. Yeah. There is that. When I say there's a remnant, I mean there are some men and women in Texas prisons from the jailers. There's some wardens yeah. who are on fire for God. Yeah, let's not forget and, that. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's some jailers who are on fire for God. There's some inmates who are on fire for God. And it's real. It's authentic. When you can see 160 men mm-hmm. who never been churched, Come like on. most of them never been churched, and we bring in, uh, um, um, what's the name of that group we bring in? Jeremy Sanders and Sounds of Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. And we get to worshiping, and you got cats tatted up from their eyebrows down to their toes, hands raised, worshiping, singing, 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 how, uh, how great is our God. And then you got guys who never experienced like the Holy Spirit, yeah, getting yeah. slain in the Spirit, getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. How do you explain a 24 year old Mexican gangbanger who's second generation, who's never been to church? Falling out and speaking in tongues, bro. How do you yeah. explain that? He, he, he that don't have nothing house. to emulate. He's, not, right. he's not copying something he saw, right? You exactly. know how some folks that, do. That yeah. ain't jailhouse. Man, it's crazy. You just made me think of something because it's almost like they don't have all the weights and the fancy pretenses that we mm-hmm. tend to bring to church culture. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the church hats and the suits and the three mm-hmm. piece suits that we sometimes impose and say, hey, you. If you're going to come worship, you got to dress like this. Right. You got to talk like that. Right. It's like there's nothing. 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 Right. But God. Authentic. That's why I love going. Yeah. And um, do you think sometimes in church we miss the mark? Bruh, when we used to go, <laughs> we, would go, we would go do Freedom Weekends. Yeah. And it was so fire that I would come back to church on Sunday and be like, I'm going back to the prison, man. <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't ready, man. <laughs> like, y'all, oh. y- y'all are so entitled. We're so mm. entitled mm. and so uh, right consumer-driven. Yeah. Ra- you know, we're just so convenience-oriented, and these guys don't have the organs. They don't have the keys and the multimedia, and, man, them boys hungry. Man. Yeah. No, it's like it, it's it's God or nothing. Yes. 
You know, yeah. I I don't need my song. I don't need carp carpeted mm-hmm. pews right. or chairs or PowerPoint presentations. Coffee shops in the in the church. All right, that's where we draw the line, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's time to go. I gotta have my coffee now. No. <laughs> And I'm not judging you gotta that. Draw the line somewhere. Yeah, and I ain't judging. I think that's cool. I think it's cool. I think it's cool for churches to have coffee shops. I'll stop by Starbucks on the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, would they let me bring it in at least? Probably not. Right, right, nah. right. Right, right, right. Man, I'm going to end up in jail before you know it. Oh, I can't believe I don't know why I agreed to do this interview, JJ. Man. Oh. But this is phenomenal. Talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, what God has been doing in your life as of late, mm-hmm. you know. Um, You've seen some remarkable things. Mm -hmm. You've experienced them personally for yourself. You've seen the transformation. You've been a recipient of the transformation. Mm -hmm. Um, But that don't just go away. It's not a one-time, signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. Like, God's still doing the work, man. Right, right. Um, You know, how has God been um, active in your life as of late? You really, you want the, you want the, you want the real, real, or you want the radio version? I've never known you to be. (laughs) Mm, Yeah. It's your yeah, world, man. Yeah. I'm just in it. What has God been doing? He's been reintroducing himself to me mm-hmm. and his grace and mercy in a whole new way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in a season of my life that I never thought I'd be in. Going through a divorce yeah. um, after 25 years, um, just retired from yeah. pastoring last month. Man, it's fresh. Um, yeah. So I've been on sabbatical for a year and just trying to find me. Mm-hmm. Um, the work still continues. Yeah. Um, we're still serving youth. We're still helping people get jobs. We're still helping people get homes. We're still doing community wealth building. Um, I'm still a preacher of the gospel. I will always be a bond servant. But what God has really been doing is teaching me that some of the dogmatic ways that I used to have and that the church used to mm-hmm. used to push, Yeah. God, like, man, I ain't, that ain't even me. Mm. Like, I used to push you know how sin and you you, you mess up. God's gonna body slam you, yeah. and then I messed up. Yeah, and he didn't body slam me. He yeah. picked me up and said, "Sit your behind down over here." And he's just been teaching me yeah. how to learn him in a real way. Mm. Um, so I don't know. Maybe one. Maybe somebody listening has fallen, mm-hmm. has made a mistake, is going through something they never thought they'd go through. And are having to relearn God's grace and His mercy, His anger. I'm t- all church people talking about how mean God. God's going you whoremongers and you adulterous. God's gonna send you to hell. He got hell fire waiting for you. And I and some of that stuff, man, I used to like really believe. Yeah, yeah. Those scare um, tactics. The scare it's tactics. It's almost like a, a car salesman for the gospel. Yes. Right. Know? Right. Right. <laughs> but what I what I found is His anger is but for a moment. But his mercy lasts for a lifetime. That's it. That's what I found. So that's what he's doing in my life. Super excited about uh, business, doing mm-hmm. some some real estate development, um, building townhomes in Fifth Ward, getting ready to do some affordable housing yeah. for yeah. some for folks here in the in the community. Um, still preaching the gospel, man. Still making disciples. Still mentoring. Um, and c- of course, our nonprofit community works is still doing great work. But yeah. I'm enjoying retirement. I'm enjoying being a daddy. Say, man, how how, how you gonna retire at like 36? Like, what, what you doing? I you appreciate that. I'm, I made 52 a couple of weeks God. ago. I'm five oh, dudes, bro. Man, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, you give me hope. I think I told you that the other day. Like, you give a young man like myself some hope. Like, I'm like, all right, cool. There's there's some, you know, you you, you you're like, hey, you know, the grays is nice and salt. You yeah, know, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, salt and yeah, pepper yeah, look. I'm yeah. like, all right, cool. I got something to look forward to. Hey, man, it's his, it's his, it's his grace. Got to keep working out. <laughs> yeah. right. Take care of yourself. Eat uh-huh. right. Drink lots of water. Um, stay prayed up. Live holy best yeah. you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, he'll preserve you. He'll yes, preserve sir. you, man. Yes, sir. Man, oh, you said something that was key that I really, really uh, believe. You know, his, it's his kindness man. that leads us to repentance. Yes. Uh, something I'm having to learn with my own kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hello. <laughs> oh man. Mm-hmm. I'm. You know, I, I find myself talking to my babies like they're thirty. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> you know, arg- not arguing, but like, like, come on, shouldn't you get it? Forgetting that, oh, he's eleven. Yeah. Like, of course, he don't get it yet. Yeah. Right. Wow. Um, and wow. it's the same way God speaks to me sometimes. Wow. His kindness. It's always been His kindness that has transformed me. Wow. You know, sometimes you you, you wow. talk about how people you know think that God is gonna body slam them. Mm-hmm. We tend to do the worst body slamming. 
to ourselves. Right. Right? Because we're other, so yeah. ashamed. Mm -hmm. We're so devastated. Like, oh, man, how could I have done this? You know, I can't do this, man. All the while, God is like, I I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. But we run. Um, did you find uh, throughout that season or any of those seasons mm -hmm. that did you kind of like separate yourself from God at all? Or did you run to him? Or mm -hmm. how, how was that, man, before so, we wrap up? I definitely went through a season of wilderness. Um, was it self-inflicted or? It was self-inflicted. Yeah. Um, right after we after, after my separation, mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of was really battling with shame and guilt. Yeah. Um, battling with resentment, anger, you know, some most of it was towards myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I found that I never fell away from God. Yeah, yeah. But I did say, God, give me one minute. I'm finna do me for a minute. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Just, hey, wait right here in the car for me. Ah. Oh. I'll be right back. Yeah. I'm finna run over here. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. So, God, mm -hmm. hey, God, I'm still... You, you, you good? Just you need anything? I'm still here, but I'm over here. Just give me a minute. I've been faithful all these years. Right. Just give me a minute. I've been faithful 20. <laughs> I've been pastoring 20 years, been been a disciple for 25. Give me eight or nine months, man. Oh, get man. this up out of me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. That yeah. is the realest thing I've ever hey, heard in my life, man. Bro. I did not know how to describe that season of my life, but that is exactly what I did, yeah. bro. That is yeah. exactly all right. Anyway. But see, Dave, I've known you. Probably since 2004, 2005. Yeah, around, that's you've been, right around the time I gave my life to the Lord. Yeah. You've been faithful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. man, he understands. And I found out that he God is big and bad enough. Mm. to let, You need to shake your fist at him and say, man, I'm upset at this. Or, hey, I don't understand that. God is big enough and bad enough to take our little emotions and our little temper tantrums. Ooh. He can handle it. And he's not going to smack us around. Just like when your kid mouths off. Mm -hmm. Hey, boy, you better... Get yourself in line. You know, you're not finna just tee off on him. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's how he's been with me. And it's been an amazing walk. And he's been better than good. He's been extraordinarily kind. He's blessed me tremendously. I don't understand. I don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I can agree. I can agree. Yeah. Uh, two more things, man. Mm -hmm. Any tools or practical tips? You know, because oftentimes we, talk, we tend to over spiritualize yeah. things right yeah. and we conceptualize and talk about the abstract concepts mm -hmm. of how and you know what i'm saying we, mm -hmm. you know knowledge puffs yep um right and you've never taken me as that dude yeah. right yeah but give me some of the tools and practical tips that that you utilize to climb out of that that dark space don't stop talking to god mm. i don't care if you fresh up out of the sin yeah 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 um, don't stop talking to God, like pray. Mm -hmm. um, try to make it daily. Yeah, yeah. Um, try to have a set time. Uh -huh. And then when you pray, listen. Um, listen for him to speak back. Listen to the people around you who are your inner circle. Um, and then develop a battle plan to get back, whatever that looks like. If it's going through therapy. Yeah. If it's getting back on a mental health issue, if I need to, if I need my meds, if it's going to AA or NA or whatever it is that a person needs to get back on their A game, take the practical help. Even though it buffets the flesh, yeah, yeah. it takes time. It takes away from the fun time. But I just say be committed to a to building a personal battle plan yeah. to get back to wherever that place is. And just know that um, I say last thing practical mm -hmm. is just don't quit don't quit man don't quit because mm. sometimes it feels unbearable yeah yeah and if it's like i was talking to somebody last night and they were like yeah i've been faithful for a long time and all these things are going well but this one thing is not going right and i'm pissed at god yeah because of that one thing Because that one thing like i'm yeah. pissed and this person had been waiting for a long time mm -hmm. for this prayer to be answered and hadn't been answered yet yeah yeah so um just don't quit don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. Mm. No, that's it, man. Yeah. I mean, shoot, if Paul had a thorn in his flesh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just think about how how um, more so sometimes we got to go through some things. It's, yeah. You know, you, you said something too, man. Don't stop talking to God. Mm -hmm. Stay connected. Stay even with your inner circle. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when we go through those moments of shame, 
uh, we do tend to isolate ourselves, mm -hmm. and that's when we're most vulnerable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, know, you think about it. Whenever you had, let's say, for instance, you had a target out on somebody. Let's go back to the block, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You ain't finna just run up on them when they with their whole crew. Right. Well, you might have. You was big and bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they most vulnerable when they're by themselves. Mm -hmm. And I know the mm -hmm. enemy knows how to isolate yeah. us and get us away from the pack yeah. because that is the moment when he can speak to us yeah. and we might actually listen, right? Right. We stop right. listening to the voice of God, to the voice of our friends who are mm -hmm. trying to empower us and encourage us. Yeah. And and now we just all alone yeah. with with us and the enemy. Yeah. And I, I tell you, man, sometimes that dark, you talk about a dark voice, Yeah. sometimes the darkest voice you're gonna hear is your own. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yes. But man, that that that's some of the best advice I've ever heard. Um, you just saved me like hundreds of dollars in therapy. <laughs> so I appreciate you. I need hey, to cut you a check at the end of this. Oh, hey man, I'll receive it. I will not cir <laughs> circumvent my blessing, bro. I will you know take that. <laughs> oh, all right, man. I got one yeah. more thing, man, to yeah. ask you. I ask everybody this. Okay. Um, you know, because um, you know, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And you've clearly put in a lot of work, mm -hmm. right? You you've been grinding your your whole life, um, faithful servant. <clears throat> and um, you know, uh, but tell me how has your faith, right? Mm -hmm. The the two, how has your faith inspired your work? Right? Like how has your faith in God Wow. Propelled you to the success that you experienced to this day, yeah. Because right? wow. I know your work, your work. I mean, you're a smart guy, mm -hmm. hardworking. It can only take you so far, mm -hmm. right? But that faith, man, sometimes mm -hmm. unlocks doors and opportunities that our hands just. Yeah, yeah. People told me so. We're sitting in a ten thousand square foot building on two point two acres on a main thoroughfare on Homestead Road, one of the most, you know, one of the main thoroughfares. People told me to walk away from this building. They're like, "Yeah, this building's too messed up. Um, walk away." Mm -hmm. Oh man, the owner—he's a redneck. He's a—he's a George Bush, Donald Trump, or he—he mm -hmm. talks to you. He talks to you bad. You know, walk away from it. My faith said, "Take the BS from mm -hmm. this from the landlord. Stay here and labor here. I have a plan for you." And then fast forward to the pandemic, we bought this building during the pandemic. So faith um, has impacted my work in a sense that I don't listen to man mm -hmm. above God. Yeah, above God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I listen to wise counsel. Come on. Um, my faith has um, brought me through some of the most personal lows. Um to keep doing the work mm -hmm. because I wanted to walk away from the work mm -hmm. um, and just totally go into business, try to pursue that seven figures. Come on. Cause we could, Hey, we could do it. We could do it. Listen, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to be real. Like it, do it doesn't it. take a lot to be honest yeah. to make six, seven figures right. these days. Right. You know, there's strategies, there's plans. You don't need faith to right. become a millionaire. Correct. Let's just be real. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Right. So there's yeah. blueprints out there. People yeah. have done it. If they've yeah. done it, we can do it. Right. So how there's something but there's that little um that still small voice on the inside that says, nah, I need you to do this my way. I need you to trust me. Yeah. And that and that, so, you know, answer your question directly is just I think faith has impacted my work um profoundly because some of the visions that we have mm -hmm. are so profound. They didn't come from us. Some of your goals and dreams and aspirations that you feel called to do, yeah. it's too big for you to do it by yourself. Right. They don't make sense. They don't make sense. And so mm -hmm. faith will carry you through the valleys and through the failures and through the closed businesses and through the bankruptcies and come on. through the evictions and through the foreclosures and the repossessions. I know nobody know nothing about none of that. I don't know nobody's yeah, never listen. had nothing repossessed, never had anything foreclosed, they've never lost, but faith is what <laughs> says get your behind up and keep going and give it another shot because it's going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -mm -mm. Man, I am going to find myself in jail <laughs> within the next couple of months. <laughs> And it's gonna be all your fault. Let's man. go. Let's <laughs> ride, man. Let's do I'm it. I'm gonna call Doctor B up after this and just be call. Like, all right, right, let's go, bro. You right. I'm coming to scoop you up. Just, we going. Dang, man, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> let's, let's do it. I'm so thankful, man, that you 
you decided to come kick it with me, man. Um, your honesty, your transparency, your knowledge, your wisdom, man, your experience is, um, it's not in vain. Amen. It's not in vain. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so don't ever get weary in well doing. Amen. Um, Cause there's somebody watching. All right. <laughs> I love I you, appreciate man. Appreciate you, man. I love you, Dave. Mm. Nah, DJ man. Dave. <laughs> man, how can we keep up with you? Um, my socials is Johnny Gentry on IG. I'm Johnny Gentry three. Um, Facebook. Just hit me up. You can follow Community Work CDC. You know, you talk to an old dude, try to ask me how to. How can we, you got an old dude. You got to, some. You got some really smart young cats around you too. You know, my homie Josh, Rob. You got some yeah, folks around. Yeah. You know, so I, look, man, they keep you right. They keep yeah, you yeah. Right. I'm on IG. Uh, I'm on Facebook. But you can follow Community Work CDC. Love it. Uh, just hit us up. We here. We here. We, and we serve in Northeast Houston with everything that we got. That's it, man. That's yeah. all we ask, man. That's all we ask. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have done it once again, broken down the breakthrough with one of my favorite pastors, missionaries, entrepreneurs, Pastor Johnny Gentry. Thank you, man. Thank you, Dad. Appreciate, appreciate you, man. Right. Much love. Man.